During my time on YouTube, I am often complimented on my intelligence. Now, I'm not trying to blow smoke up my own rear end. It's just a thing that happens. People say they like the research and they're really impressed with how I do a deep dive and disassemble other people's arguments and specifically the arguments put forward by the Young Turks. However, I'm actually well in agreement with Stephen Michael Davis that the barrier for entry to YouTube in terms of being a good researcher is so low that all you really have to do is actually scratch the surface a little bit, read past the headline here and there, and people will think you're a high-level researcher. If you go and read a book or two on a subject, then they'll think you have an unlimited IQ, but here on this channel, I have to be quite humble and say that my IQ is only 10,000. And the thing is, this was my position throughout. All you have to do is just do a little bit of research and you could basically disassemble anybody left, right, or center. That's at least what I believed until I saw this Young Turks video where Anna Kasparian sets up this whole scenario about how she's gonna take down Tim Pool for allegedly reading a headline and misrepresenting the article, but Anna's gonna come to town and slam dunk him. However, what ultimately ends up happening, and I will prove this to you throughout the course of this video, is that Anna Kasparian managed to do the thing that should be impossible on the internet.com, which is lose an argument to a video that cannot argue back. You know everything that's going to be said in the video you're responding to, and yet Anna Kasparian still loses the case. She still can't debunk Tim Pool. It's pathetic. We're going to go over it. We're going to talk about it. But first, this video is sponsored. So let me chuck it to the sponsor, One Handed Chuck. Then we'll bring it back over here and we'll discuss this whole thing on the other side. Low levels of collagen show up in more ways than one. Obviously, you're familiar with wrinkles and sagging skin. But did you know your collagen levels actually impact whether your nails are strong or brittle? or whether your hair has a nice shine or it's thin and also brittle. Well, the thing is, if you have low collagen, I have a solution for you. If you go over to healthwithjustice.com, you can get this amazing collagen powder. It has five different types of collagen to help you set what's right and restore that youthful glow, strengthen your hair, strengthen your nails, and all that. But guess what? This month, you can get it for 51% off with the bonus of some lifestyle coaching over at healthwithjustice.com. This is one of our best sales, and you get the coaching, the free perks, and all that, all by clicking the link in the top of the description box or in the pinned comment. That's healthwithjustice.com. This is the result of defund the police. This is the result of the attack on the police. I'm sorry, this is reality. This was not a case of white supremacy. This was five black cops beating a black man to death. They caused the problem, then they complain. We were right the whole time. No, dude, we hired these cops because you called this out. Now look where we are. So what Tim Pool is talking about right there is this post-millennial article and this fact that the Memphis Police Department, in order to appease left-wing people, ended up lowering their standards in order to become a police officer so that they could get more black and Hispanic people in the force. Now, this isn't speculation. This isn't rumor. You can see people in the police department advocate for this, talk about this, talk about how it's important, and it's based on this mistaken premise that white male officers are significantly more violent against minorities than black or Hispanic officers. Or so. Black people being killed by police has been an issue rivaled only, perhaps, by the coronavirus. How police interact with communities of color is an ongoing and divisive conversation. Now, one thing most everyone agrees on here is a more diverse police force is a critical component of any plan of policing. But achieving that diversity is much harder than simply asking for money and buying it. In Memphis alone, there are about 400 fewer officers than are needed on the streets. Recruiting efforts can come up dry and, let's face it, you've done stories on this. Yeah. Uh, talking people into becoming officers, particularly people of color, is a tough task. Fox 13's Dominique Dillon tells us now how a local, historically black college says that they are not only up to the task, but they can be a model for the nation. 
A study done this year investigating the role of officer, race, and gender in police-civilian interactions published by the journal Science showed black and Hispanic officers use force far less frequently than white male officers. Funny thing is, from what I've seen, research actually shows the opposite, and black and Hispanic officers escalate to deadly force with black perpetrators more than white officers. On top of that, it's not just these individual officers that were diversity hires. The chief of police, the black female chief of police of the Memphis Police Department, is actually a failed cop who basically was ran out of town over in Atlanta due to the fact that she botched an internal affairs investigation. So again, diversity hires were not only in the officers that ended up beating Nichols to death, but they were at the top. But Anna Kasparian actually thinks that this is not the case. Anna Kasparian and the Young Turks actually think that Tim Pool is a brain-dead racist. How do I know that? Because they actually titled their video in this way, because apparently you can't ever call out affirmative action even when it leads to the beating and the killing of one Terry Nichols. That's Tim Pool's commentary on the brutal beating of Tyree Nichols, who died in a hospital three days after Memphis police officers beat him uh, to the point where he was in critical condition. Now, uh, what's interesting is he is referencing a post-millennial article while making his commentary. And it's abundantly clear that he didn't even really bother to carefully and critically read the article that he's citing there. So this is one of the reasons why I absolutely love this video. I'm in love with it. I would marry it over my fiance. I would set aside our betrothal in order to walk this video down the aisle because Anna Kasparian is just setting herself up for failure. She's like, Tim Pool, Timothy, didn't even bother to read this article. But I, Anna Kasparian, journalist of America, real journalism professor who teaches journalism at a college, yes, this is a real thing, will take Tim Pool to school and actually read the article. And the funny thing about this, of course, is that Anna Kasparian really didn't read past the subheadline attached to the headline, which I find incredibly amusing. So this is the article, indisputably. Let's see the side by side so that you know they match. And what Anna Kasparian is talking about is Tim Pool just getting caught up in this headline. Memphis PD dramatically lowered standards before hiring officers charged in Tyree Nichols' death. Then the sub headline, which is what Anna's basically basing her whole video on, says in 2021 and 2022, recruitment was struggling so badly that the department offered $15,000 signing bonuses and lowered education and fitness requirements. Now look, headlines can be misleading, but Anna, I got news for you, and I'm not a journalism professor who has a master's degree in journalism who teaches journalism to the future generations, but sub headlines can also be misleading or or you can actually take them out of context, base a whole 15 minute video on it, and that video can be stupid in every possible way, like you're about to do. I do believe, and maybe people don't want to hear it, Tyree Nichols would be alive if he simply got out of the car, said, okay, I'm sorry, okay, yes, yes, sir. Got on his stomach, put his hands behind his back. He didn't. He resisted, he fought, he fled, they chased him, they pinned him down, and they went nuts. I'm not saying these cops are good guys. I am not saying they're justified. I'm saying when you're dealing with a bear, a grizzly bear, do you scream at it and throw rocks at it? Or do you slowly back away while talking? So it is incredibly likely that Tyree Nichols would be alive had he not initially resisted arrest. Now, I've seen people talk about how the police department is saying that there was no justified reason for him to be pulled over. Obviously, that will be adjudicated in a court of law. And other people have said in Tennessee, you can actually resist an unlawful arrest. But that still doesn't change the fact that you're basically playing with your own life when you're doing that. And if Nichols would have surrendered, and by the way, he did resist arrest. I know a lot of left-wing people say he wasn't resisting arrest. He just fled the scene. Fleeing the scene is resisting arrest. I've seen the video. Don't be fools. Then he likely would still be alive. Now, that doesn't justify the officer's actions. If the stop was unlawful, that also doesn't mean that that's okay. 
but he would probably be alive had he just surrendered immediately and not decided to take off and run away. Now, I will give the caveat that there are conspiracy theories out there that could prove to be true, that the officers may have targeted Nichols specifically. Part of the lowering of the standards for officers means that they waved away some felonies. There is allegedly a personal connection, but at this moment in time, what we are looking at is a potentially really unjustified beating that resulted in his death. But I think it's really important to set all of those things aside, whether or not it's okay to flee an arrest that may be unlawful or whether or not this was a personal targeted attack and just point out that even if Tyree Nichols was in the wrong, he was pulled over for reckless driving, he was on drugs and all of that, the beating was excessive, likely, and that will result in criminal convictions for these officers. I bet he had some kind of drugs on him. Dude, I'm not trying to impugn his honor or integrity, but if you want to come out and you want to be like, he was a skateboarder, I'm going to be like, I'm a skateboarder. I've been skateboarding my whole life. I can tell you this, skateboarders do drugs. So I just want to be very clear that Tim Pool is 100% speculating on Tyree Nichols having drugs on him. But even if, even if in the future we learn more details and it turns out that he had something on him, does that give the cops the right to beat you to death because you are in possession of narcotics? So one of the things I love about Anna Kasparian and the Young Turks is that they really do an excellent job of arguing against nobody. So she's like, I want to make it clear that when Tim Pool says, I think that he might have had drugs on him, it's my opinion that he likely had drugs on him, that that's just Tim Pool's speculation. Who would have thought that Tim Pool's thoughts didn't actually manifest into reality and thus alter the fabric of reality? Thank you so much. Anna Kasparian for letting us know that Tim Pool, when he says he's basically speculating, is in fact speculating. But the second thing that she put out there is this idea that, oh, even if he did have drugs on him, did that actually justify beating him to death? Anna, shut up. Tim Pool is in favor of drug legalization, or at least the wussified version of drug decriminalization. If you asked him if you could beat somebody to death, over possession, he would say no. So you looking into the camera all mad and saying, that doesn't justify beating him to death is absurd. Also, I think they would have reported at some point in time whether or not Nichols had drugs on him. So I think that's bad speculation on Tim Pool's part. But more interestingly, we don't have the toxicology report. It seems to be being withheld. And likely Nichols had drugs in his system. That can explain some of his erratic behavior and all that, in my opinion. But again, that's my speculation, Anna. I don't want you to be like, this is him speculating when he's saying he's speculating, but it doesn't justify beating him to death, even though nobody made that argument. Yeah. I, I mean, really ask yourselves, okay? Both right wing, left wing, everybody. I don't care what your political affiliation is. Do you want to live in a country and a society that tells you there is state sanctioned murder by cops if they catch you with narcotics. Anna, nobody is making that argument at all. Even people who are in favor of like a Singaporean model where you get executed for possessing a certain amount of drugs want you to go through the court and the trial system for that. Also, murder is inherently unjustified. So saying do state sanctioned murder for possession, I can't believe Tim Pool is making this argument that he definitely didn't make, even in the clip that we showed of him not making that argument. So uh, Anna predicted before we started that I would get angry at this story, and it turns out she was right. So I had seen the video of um, Pool uh, talking about how uh, they asked for this and. That Black Lives Matter asked for this. Yeah, and, and then we gave it to them. What did they ask for? Well, they certainly didn't ask for a black guy uh, who was completely innocent to be beaten to death by police. So presumably, he is saying, and by the way, like the conservatives are already dumb enough without pretending you're even dumber. Like, oh, I don't know what he's talking about. What did they want? He's clearly implying they wanted black cops to be hired. And because black cops were hired, look at the lowered standards got us lower results. And by yeah. the way, every right winger now, I see on social media, they've already picked up this talking point, is talking about the real problem was lowered standards. So it's really black people's fault. Jank, you complete and utter buffoon. 
Tim Bull isn't saying the mere presence, and nobody is saying the mere presence of black officers means lowered standards. In fact, even in the article that Tim Pool is citing, even what people are pointing out, it is only two of these five officers that were hired under the newly minted lower standards that were advocated for by the left wing, by people who told us that policing would be better if the police reflected the community that they served. Many departments across the country are struggling to diversify their ranks. Others debate what true diversity looks like. According to MPD, their department reflects the demographics of the community. The logic? Black people make up 65% of the population in Memphis, and black officers are 56% of the Memphis Police Department. But not everyone agrees that sort of reflecting the citizenry is the same as true reflection. Everyone does agree that more black and brown cops are needed if true change is to occur. You can try to pretend away that that was a left-wing position, but it absolutely was. On top of that, they're not saying that by the dint of their skin color, the standards were lowered. They're pointing out to the objective fact that the standards were lowered, the stated purpose for lowering the standards, which was to get more black and Hispanic officers because allegedly they were less violent, even though the statistics show the opposite. And this is the result of that. Two of the five officers appear to be hired. And when I say appear, I mean, in reality, were hired, despite the fact that Anna Kasparian can't see it after they lowered the standards. The fact that they continue to lower the standards after these two officers were hired is even more absurd, but we will get into this a little bit later. But I just want to point out that, yes, they lowered the standards. The purpose of lowering the standards, as stated by the left wing, as advocated, by the way, by people like Cenk Uger, was to get more minorities, and a lot of times the physical standards get lowered, to get more women in the police force. If you want diversity as your number one priority, you're going to get lower qualifications because being diverse is not a qualification. Having dark skin does not mean you'll be a better cop. In fact, choosing to prioritize dark skin over education and training and a good background check likely will produce worse officers like what seems to have happened in this case. Do you understand, Jenk? Should I explain it a little bit slower? Does Anna Kasparian think that I'm saying that you can beat people to death because they lowered the standards? No, I'm not saying that, Anna. You're a buffoon. And of course we lowered this. You didn't even know yeah. when those cops were hired? I do. Thank you. I know when the cops were hired and I think that's a really, and that's why I say he didn't even bother to read the post, but the post millennial, I, I think it's a conservative publication, right? But even so, if you carefully read it and critically read it, you'll see that these, like the latest policies of the Memphis Police Department implemented, which did lower the standards, happened after these cops were hired. So let's read a few excerpts from the article that was cited by Tim Pool. So Jenk says, do you even know when these officers are hired? Then Anna says, I do in a smug way. Then she says, oh, I read the article. And Tim, you gotta carefully read the article. And then the standards were lowered after the officers were hired. So we have five statements, affirmative statements from Anna Kasparian and Jenk that Tim Pool was wrong. Let's see if they stand up to scrutiny. Memphis Police Department recruits no longer needed an associate's degree or 50 for college credit hours and could just get by with only five years of work experience. In 2021 and 2022, please remember these years, they're important. Recruitment was struggling so badly that the department offered $15,000 signing bonuses. Last year, the department also reportedly lowered the fitness requirements, doing away with the timed physical ability test. The department even offered waivers for felons to join the force, according to the New York Post. So I just want to point out that Anna Kasparian said that we should be critical readers, we should critically read this article, we should be very critical and understand and be able to do reading comprehension in order to figure out what's being told. Now, of course, Anna Kasparian doesn't even read her own graphic critically, because you can even tell just from the excerpt selected by a TYT producer that Anna Kasparian is dead wrong. Let's just look at this and we're going to go over and read it critically. And by the way, I will be going to the actual article to show you what Anna Kasparian failed to show you. So this was the giant red flag for me, which is the sentence right here up top that says, MPD recruits no longer needed an associate's degree or 54 college credit hours and could just get by with only five years of work experience period. You see that period right there, folks? That means that that sentence, that thought has ended. Then it says in 2021 and 2022, 
recruitment was struggling so badly the department offered $15,000 signing bonuses. So remember what I said about the subheadline versus the headline and versus what's actually in the article? Well, that period is clearly and obviously, if you know anything about reading comprehension, Anna Kasparian, separating out before 2021 and 2022, as denoted by the next sentence starting with in 2021 and 2022, which would apply to the two officers that were hired. And again, this is something that I just looked right at the screen, listened to Anna read that sentence, knew was wrong based on my reading and listening comprehension. Again, not that smart. Don't need a 10,000 IQ, just went back to the article to double check, and here's what it said in the previous lines before they started this excerpt. According to an NBC News report, to Darius Bean, Demetrius Haley, Emmett Martin III, Desmond Mills Jr., and Justice Smith all had been Memphis police officers for just a few years when the fatal beating of the 29-year-old father occurred on January 7th. Bean and Haley, in particular, have only been on the force since August of 2020, after the department lowered the education standards. As Action News reported, MPD recruits no longer needed an associate's degree, or 54 college credit hours and could just get by with only five years work experience, period, but also notice that there's a second paragraph. Clearly, based on what this article actually says, when you read it critically and you have reading comprehension, Anna, this article is saying that the standards for education were lowered in 2020 and the next lowering of standards and the signing bonus came in in 2021 and 2022 respectively. Now, what's interesting, and you guys can attribute this to malice or Anna Kasparian's stupidity, I leave that open to you, is that they combined a sentence that was the last sentence in a previous paragraph with the next paragraph to make them seem more closely related. So Anna, who can't read critically, didn't realize that the period separated it out, and obviously what is after the period is likely not going to apply to what is before the period, but they also added this in from a previous paragraph, which literally is critically done to separate distinct ideas. So a sentence separates distinct ideas, but even more distinct ideas, or sometimes periods of time, are separated with a different paragraph. So Anna, maybe you combine this inadvertently, maybe somebody on your staff is as dumb as you are, or maybe you were trying to slip something past your audience because clearly and obviously this sentence should not be at the top of this paragraph with no indication that they're completely separate. But again, I was able to detect this just by the structure of this and then going back to the article to confirm it. But this video gets even more weaselly. Fascinating. That's great. Well, um, these changes wouldn't have had any impact on the cops who beat Tyree Nichols to death because they were hired before the standards were lowered. Look at how smug she is right there. They were hired before. They were hired before. Before. The standards were lowered. Let's get a little oomph behind that before, Anna, so you can just slam Tim Pool own him with facts and logic as you're completely undercut already by this video. But again, you, you got to see what she puts up next. So let's actually go to another excerpt from the Post Millennial. According to an NBC News report, uh, to Darius Bean, Demetrius Haley, Emmett Martin III, Desmond Mills Jr. and Justin Smith, these are the cops who beat him, all had been Memphis Police Department officers for just a few years when the fatal beating of the 29-year-old father occurred on January 7th. Okay, so that makes it seem like, oh, maybe they were hired after the standards were lowered, except they specifically re reference the cops that were hired um, uh, the most recently, right? So Bean and Haley in particular have only been on the force since August of 2020. So do you remember what I just told you? Do you remember how I said this paragraph, then this paragraph, then the first excerpt that Anna Kasparian read? Well, she just went backwards and she's trying to do so in order to make you believe that she's going forward in the article. But that was the paragraph right before, before. the sentence that she started with. That was her editing this article out of order in order to prove herself right. Also notice that this ends with a dot, 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 like to be continued in the paragraph. And that dot, dot, dot is them saying specifically they were hired after. So that means by definition, every single one of them was hired 
before the so-called lowering of the standard. Let's no, Jenk. I'm going to read straight from that article. Let's play where Anna Kasparian cut it off. According to an NBC News report, uh, Tadarius Bean, Demetrius Haley, Emmett Martin III, Desmond Mills Jr. and Justin Smith, these are the cops who beat him, all had been Memphis Police Department officers for just a few years when the fatal beating of the 29 year old father occurred on January 7th. Okay, so that makes it seem like, oh, maybe they were hired after the standards were lowered, except they specifically re referenced the cops that were hired um, uh, the most recently, right? So Bean and Haley in particular have only been on the force since August of 2020. Bean and Haley in particular have only been on the force since August 2020 after the department lowered the education standards. Get even more specific folks. Let's give you the receipts. Let's give you each individual cop and their actual hire date. Okay, maybe maybe Tim Pool learned something here. Just listen to how smug Anna Kasparian is, even though she just read an article out of order with excerpts and cut off the key part, which points out that they did in fact lower the education requirements for the Memphis Police Department prior to hiring two of the five officers. Yet she's so smug, she whips that paper all aggressive and she's gonna take you to school. A journalism class, which she teaches at a college and she actually gets paid money by the taxpayer to inform future journalists as she's doing this absolute hatchet job. Thaddeus Bean, age 24, was hired in August of 2020. Demetrius Haley, age 30, a former corrections officer, was hired in August of 2020. Emmett Martin III, age 30, was hired in March of 2018. Desmond Mills Jr., uh, 32, former jailer in Mississippi and Tennessee, was hired in 2017. And Justin Smith, age 28, was hired in March of 2018. It's almost as if this notion, this narrative, that the lowered standards within the police department uh, leading to this brutal beating and murder really isn't an accurate analysis of what happened here. So right there, Anna inadvertently being the buffoon that she is, 100% proves exactly the point that was made in the Post Millennial article and the point that was made by Tim Pool. That two of these five officers were hired after they lowered the education standards. After, not before Anna, just because they instituted signing bonuses later on doesn't mean that the standard lowering happened at the moment they lowered the standards for the final time. They consistently were getting lower, meaning that the officers that were recruited in 2021 and 2022 are likely worse officers than the ones that were recruited in 2020 when they lowered standards like the educational standards, as outlined by this post-millennial article that Anna failed to read critically. It's almost as if this notion, this narrative, that the lowered standards within the police department uh, leading to this brutal beating and murder really isn't an accurate analysis of what happened here. Anna, your abomination of a video isn't an accurate analysis of how a literate person would interpret what is written in the post millennial article. Hey guys, editing Sean here. I noticed while I was editing this video that Devin Tracy, Atheism is Unstoppable, really good friend to the channel, actually did a video on this very subject. And I want you guys to go support him. He was recently banned on Patreon by going over to his subscribe star, which will be linked in the description. You can watch his full takes there or you could sign up on censored.tv promo code AIU in order to support him in his endeavors. So definitely check it out. He's a really good friend of the channel. We're basically saying the same thing. And believe me, now that I'm editing this video, I know how similar it is. So let's give him some credit and some support. And he was talking about defunding the police in, in other parts of the video. Um, wait, what part of a $15,000 signing bonus is defunding the police? Yeah, 100%. So I just wanna point out that I've actually heard that the Memphis police budget wasn't actually cut, but we will address that claim specifically. What I wanna talk about is what Cenk Uger just said right there, that just goes to show you how low IQ the Young Turks actually are. And he was talking about defunding the police in, in other parts of the video. Um, wait, what part of a $15,000 signing bonus is defunding the police? Yeah, 100%. So these are the same people who think the education budget is the same thing as teacher salaries. A lot of people want to raise education spending because they think that automatically goes into the pockets of teachers in terms of pay increases. But in reality, I think we should be able to know that you can give employees at a government agency signing bonuses in order to 
recruit them without actually increasing the funding for that agency in particular. Like, one does not equal the other. You could just reallocate funds in your department in a different way, especially if you're specifically low on recruiting for that particular year. So a $15,000 signing bonus does not equal whether or not they're funding the police to the full capacity that they could be funding them. I hope we all understand that. So let me get this right. They poured more money into policing and try to get people to join it, and then they got folks that weren't involved in this situation at all, and we have no idea if they're good or bad, but we do know they have more money, not less money. So did defund the police win? No, not remotely. So here's what's really interesting and where I'm gonna have to clarify and correct Tim Pool and the Young Turks. So first and foremost, there were no significant cuts. There may have been some redirecting in terms of funding post the George Floyd riots in the city of Memphis with their police department. And the reason for that is because the Memphis PD actually had significant budget cuts all the way back in 2014. How significant were these budget cuts? Well, essentially, the city of Memphis, according to multiple different analysis by public safety organizations, needs around 2,500 officers in order to function as a police department. They currently have 1,933. By the way, we talked about on this channel before how murders in Memphis post the George Floyd riot went up from around 180, 190 to 290. And since the Memphis police counts homicides different, those homicides went up to 330, and then they went up to another record-breaking year in 2021. So being short those officers is incredibly dramatic. They weren't even trying to get the 2,500 officers that is supposed to be the bare minimum in order to keep the city safe. They were trying to get 2,300, and they were still 400 short of that goal, and it's likely the reason why they lost those officers in the first place over time was due to the budget cuts in 2014. So yes, they did increase salaries for the officers, they reduced residency requirements, education requirements, and all these different things, and yet they're still short 400 officers from their goal, and that means they're short 600 officers from what they actually need in order to keep the city safe, and that's one of the reasons why they had back-to-back record-breaking years. On top of that, while they did do some pay increases and all of that, the real thing that's keeping their budget from going up, which is relatively similar year over year, is the fact that they have to pay so much money in overtime due to the fact that they're so short-staffed in terms of officers. So it's not really that their outlying budget is going up year over year it's that their spending is going up due in large part to the fact that they have to pay officers time and a half in order to work to close the gap that was put there in the first place due to 2014 budget cuts to the Memphis Police Department. So the Memphis Police were defunded or did have their budget cut. However, it didn't have anything to do with the Black Lives Matter George Floyd riots. And when you couple that with the overall negative sentiment against police, they're dramatically short of their recruiting goals, which are on their own dramatically short of what they actually need to keep the city safe. So yes, they're offering bonuses here and there, but in reality, they're still significantly short of where they should be in order to protect the city of Memphis, and obviously lowering the standards to recruit more and more minority officers, grabbing a scandal-ridden police official out of Atlanta were not a solution for this department. Did it win there? No. Did it win nationwide? No. Did we pass a single reform bill, let alone defund the police? Did we even pass a reform bill saying, hey, p please do not choke people to death? We actually tried to pass that, and the House did pass it, and the Republicans in the Senate, along with the disgusting conservative Democrats like Manchin, said, no, no way, no way, no way. Cops should be allowed to choke black people to death. Well, you tell me that's not what they voted, because they did vote that. They did vote that because Republicans are despicable monsters. Yeah, so they voted down that bill because one, it was broad federal legislation that did not say officers can't choke people to death. We already have laws that allow the federal government to charge officers in wrongful deaths in terms of civil rights violations. So what Jenk is saying absolutely makes no sense at all whatsoever. Let us not forget that Chauvin was actually indicted on federal charges, ended up pleading guilty to those federal charges, and so did 
with the other officers. So this idea that this was not illegal federally is absurd. The reason this didn't pass federally is due to the fact that it had other poison pills and other ridiculous things that needed to be rooted out of the bill. It wasn't taken out by the Democrats, therefore it didn't pass. On top of that, we had a bunch of pieces of criminal justice reform and legislation pass at a bunch of different levels. New York cut their police budget. Los Angeles cut their police budget. They then lost officers and had to increase their police budget, but that doesn't magically materialize the officers once they already retire and all of that. So, Jank, you're just wrong. They passed plenty of reform bills. Seven different pieces of criminal justice reform legislation were passed in the state of New York after the George Floyd riots, or actually after George Floyd's death during the George Floyd riots. So you're just wrong on everything you just said right there. Now they turn around and go, oh, you see that? We defunded them by giving them $15,000 extra. You have to be so unbelievably low IQ to just digest TYT content uncritically again you can give a signing bonus to somebody you can pay them more money in terms of their salary while cutting the funding from the overall organization corporation or whatever it is we're talking about the memphis police are giving out these recruitment bonuses because they're 400 officers short from recruitment goals that they try to reach in December of 2020. Again, it's all linked in the description. Unlike Anna Kasparian and Cenk Uger, I'm not afraid of you checking my sources, but I give you that ability to do so by clicking the sources tab under the description, every one of my videos, and it will be there for this one so you can read it for yourself. And guys, the whole thing is so explicitly racist. In the beginning, I was amused by it because it's so over the top. Oh, this is what you wanted. And look at these black officers and what they did. What me, me, oh, I'm not racist. Jenk, the reason people are emphasizing the race of the officers is that had they been white officers, that is what you wouldn't stop talking about. Now, all of a sudden, when the cops turned out to be black, so is black on black crime, you care, but you don't like the fact that you can't point the finger at a white person, which is one of the reasons why this story isn't getting anywhere near the same level of attention as an officer Chauvin. You care about race. This is why whenever there's a white cop involved in a situation, you put in the headline, white cop, but whenever it's minority cops, all of a sudden they just become cops. You're obsessed with race. I mean, the left is so obsessed with finding a white person in order to blame for this, that there's a white officer at the initial stop that Nichols was pulled over at, somebody who tried to tase him when he was resisting arrest and fleeing, who didn't show up to the second scene, had nothing to do with the beating or anything like that, that they want charged with murder. And they're saying, if you don't charge this officer who did not participate in the beating at all, the crime that's actually being charged with that crime, then that is white supremacy and that is racism. You know, to this day, some of the dumbest people on the internet say, no, no, it's okay. I, I listen to liberals like Tim Pool. Uh, I know, it's amazing, <laughs> it's amazing. Okay, just pause for a He's second. He's like though. one of the most racist guys in the country. Your side is obsessed with race, Jank. It is undeniable that you guys advocated for making the police department match the community that they served. That meant racially, you're not gonna try to pretend that away. And when they lowered the standards in the name of achieving that goal, you got bad officers and you end up with an incident like this. He has this analysis that on one hand, seems to go after the cops. I mean, it is interesting that this, oh, they got hired because of lower standards. Don't think that I'm not aware that their race has something to do with part of the reason why he's even saying that to begin with, even though the 100%. facts don't bear it out. Facts don't bear it out. Anna, the facts 100% bear it out. You had to read an article out of order and then hack off the end of a sentence, cut something out from one paragraph, paste it into another paragraph, and I was still able to detect from your video alone that you are lying. So the facts 100% do bear it out. And again, you keep trying to say Tim Pool is racist for pointing this out. You're the ones who wanted the standards lowered. You specifically, Anna Kasparian and Cenk Uger, wanted a police force that matched the community that they served. That's something that a bunch of these left-wingers said. They lowered the standards in order to do so. And now you say, oh, you're a racist for pointing it out. No, Anna, you're just an utter buffoon. Yeah, so 
look, that's actually the part that made me angry when he started going after Tyree Nichols personally. No, I'm not impugning his integrity. That's but, exactly but, what you're but, doing. But I'm gonna make up that he's a druggie, cuz look at him, he's black. <laughs> this video is so off the rails, it's ridiculous and absurd. He's like, oh my God, you're calling him a druggie because he's black. No, Jank. The officers are also black, as you guys have pointed out multiple different times. And Tim Pool didn't call those officers druggies. It's because Nichols was behaving erratically, kind of like he was on something. That being said, it is not proven. We don't have the toxicology report at the time of me recording this video. Or if it is out, I haven't seen it. So that is speculation. But again, Tim Pool was speculating. Now, he said drugs on him, which is even more ridiculous because I feel like we would have seen that on the body cam or somewhere else. But again, you're saying now Tim Pool looks like a druggie and he brags about not being able to get laid on the internet. <laughs> no, you look like a stupid drug you can't get laid and brags about it on the internet. Okay, Jank. Okay, he had no drugs on him. There's literally evidence that he did not have drugs. Those thugs, the cops that went and murdered him, checked everywhere for drugs, including their buddies who were all sitting there laughing and totally indifferent to his death. They checked and checked and checked to justify their murderous friends, and they found no evidence of drugs. Again, clearly the allegation was that he had drugs in his system, not necessarily on him. But I do like that Jenk is just screaming, yelling, and hollering like an utter madman, and trying to pretend that Tim Pool thinks Nichols is guilty because he's black, as he's condemning the officers for killing Nichols, who are also black. But apparently he's on the, the, the officer side. I, Cenk, you're, you're confusing me. And I remember, this video exists. I remember talking about it when I hosted a show with Michael Brooks on Jacobin. We showed the video. He was hassled by cops as he was covering Occupy Wall Street. And he was furious. Oh, oh, the cops, the police state, this, that, crying and crying and crying. What a victim, right? Because when there is unjust, Police behavior that targets people like him, unacceptable. But when you have a very clear case, it's so clear. I mean, you couldn't get clear of police brutality, police murder, and it affects a black person in, in, in Mississippi, I'm sorry, in Tennessee, no, it's totally fine. I mean, we gotta find excuses to both, in, in a weird way, provide cover for the cops, but then also question whether the cops were qualified, probably because of their skin color. No problem. Uh, no, we're questioning whether the cops were qualified based on the fact that they lowered the qualifications just prior to the cops being hired and it was in the middle of a hiring drive. Do, do, you, do you understand that? They got rid of the education requirements. They used to require 54 college credits. Then they no longer required that. They said five years of work experience. That's what people are questioning. They're saying, hey, look, they lowered the standards for these cops, then they got hired. By the way, isn't it interesting that a rookie cop was hired at age 30? Would seem like he probably couldn't qualify under the previous regiment, but all of a sudden he was able to qualify and he was hired on. They're a little old for a rookie class, don't you think? Definitely. Yeah. Look, if you guys don't know how Temple got tiny bit famous that we bothered to talk about him, uh, he used to come on this show and other shows, left wing shows, uh, as Anna pointed out, when he would go to Ferguson, etc. And back then he was like, oh, I'm with the people and I'm with- I don't know about Ferguson, he went to Occupy for okay. sure. Okay, yeah. so I think he did, but okay. it, it, but you guys can confirm that, etc. right? So, uh, so he goes and pretends to be a left winger and pretends to be concerned about the plight of black people, etc. So then as a left winger starts doing a show, it's totally not popular because he's not an interesting person, he's not an intelligent person. And then he stumbles upon, uh, a, a winning solution for, for him financially, which is racism. And so he became known as the guy on the left who blames black people for everything. So you would watch his show and just rando out of nowhere, everything would come back to it's black people's fault. And then the right wingers love that. They were like, and it's the old Dave Rubin, Jimmy Dore model, right? So what's great about this is that Jenk is essentially saying we made Tim Pool because Jenk's ego is so gigantic that he can't see somebody else grow up and become successful without trying to take some kind of credit for it. But I just want to point out the reason why the Young Turks are talking about Tim Pool, the reason why they're using him in their thumbnail when they didn't used to do this a few years ago is because they realized when you put Tim Pool in your video, 
all of a sudden that video goes north of 100,000 views and the Young Turks other content talking about other things their actual political positions gets nowhere near that level of views. So it's kind of embarrassing that the Young Turks at 5 million plus subscribers needs to clickbait Tim Pool and Ben Shapiro and all these people that they used to never talk about in order to become successful. So I just find that hilarious. They're essentially grifting off of Tim Pool while saying he's a grifter and while Anna Kasparian is showing herself to be a hack fraud, lazy, uncapable journalist who's so pathetic she can't even read an article that she's criticizing Tim Pool for lacking in ability to read. But hey, those are just my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you like this video, then show them by leaving a like. Subscribe for more content. Follow me on all my social medias. They're linked in the description. This has been me talking about Anna Kasparian failing to take down Tim Pool. Till next time.